welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, in a very hot Spain. Whew. Okay, where am I taking you to today? Well, I'm taking you near to the end of King Edward VI's reign. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 10th of May, 1553, the first expedition of the Company of Merchant Adventurers left London in search of a northeast passage to Asia. The Company of Merchant Adventurers, or to give them their full name, the Mystery and Company of Merchant Adventurers for the discovery of regions, dominions, islands and places unknown, had been formed in 1551 by Richard Chancellor, Sebastian Cabot and Sir Hugh Willoughby. Its purpose was to discover a new northern trade route to Cathay or China and the Spice Islands, the East Indies. In his book, This Orient Isle, Elizabethan England and the Islamic World, Jerry Broughton explains that English cloth exports had collapsed in the 1550s and merchants saw the discovery of a northeast passage going north to reach the east as the solution to their problems. They could find new markets for English woolen cloth and also benefit from treasures found in the east. Broughton goes on to explain that Edward VI's councillors came to an agreement for this voyage with London's merchants and explorer Sebastian Cabot who, with his father and brothers, had been given letters patent for a voyage of discovery back in 1496 by Henry VII. Shares in the company were sold, with 240 investors paying £25 each to fund the voyage to the tune of £6,000, and a royal charter under Edward VI was prepared, although it never actually received the royal seal due to Edward dying in July 1553. On the 10th of May 1553, the expedition left London. It was led by Sea Captain Sir Hugh Willoughby as Captain General of the fleet, with Richard Chancellor as Chief Pilot. The fleet consisted of Willoughby's flagship, the Bonner Esperanza, Chancellor's ship, the Edward Bonaventure, and the Bonnet Confiden Confidentia. Oh, that's a mouthful. As they sailed along the Thames past Greenwich Palace, they fired a salute to King Edward, who was ill at the time. On the 23rd of June, 1553, the three ships left the port of Harwich in Essex. And on the 27th of July, all three ships anchored in the Lofoten Islands in the Norwegian Sea, where they spent three days. During that time, the men decided that if the ships became separated at sea, then they would reunite at Varda. The ships struggled in storms and terrible winds and did indeed become separated. The Bonner Esperanza and Bonner Confidentia managed to meet, but they lost Chancellor's Edward Bonaventure. Willoughby realised that he must have overshot Varda, and with the two ships taking on water, he tried to find safe harbour. Eventually, on the 18th of September 1553, the two ships entered the estuary of the River Varzina in Murmansk and anchored there. The water was teeming with fish and there was plentiful wildlife, so Willoughby decided to winter there. Unfortunately, no sign of habitation was found. And... In a winter where temperatures dropped to minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 34 degrees Celsius, Willoughby and the crews of the two ships ended up freezing and starving to death. Their bodies and Willoughby's diary were found the following summer by Russian fishermen. The third ship, the Edward Bonaventure, found safe anchorage in the harbour of Nikola Kurelsky Monastery on the northern Davina River. Richard Chancellor, who commanded the ship, was invited to Moscow for an audience with Tsar Ivan IV, or Ivan IV, Ivan the Terrible. And the meeting led to a trade agreement between Russia and England through the White Sea. This trade agreement was an important one. It meant that England could get Russian goods directly from Russia rather than through the Hanseatic League 
and English cloth could be sold directly to Russia too. The trade agreement also led to the mystery and company of merchant adventurers being rechartered on the 26th of February 1555 in the reign of Queen Mary I as the Muscovy Company or Russia Company. Full name, the Merchants, Merchants Adventurers of England for the discovery of lands, territories, isles, dominions and seigneuries unknown and not before that late adventure or enterprise by sea or navigation commonly frequented. I do love those long names. The charter gave the company a monopoly and meant that it had the right to trade with Russia without paying customs duties or tolls. While England imported woolen cloth to Russia, the company imported furs, tallow, wax, timber, flax, tar and hemp. Ivan IV also gave the company various privileges. So the voyage failed in finding the North East Passage and Willoughby and 70 crew members died. But the voyage ended up being beneficial to England. I'll give you a link to read more about the voyage in a 16th century work called The Principal Navigations, Voyages, Traffics and Discoveries of the English Nation. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 10th of May, 1552, author John Clarke, who'd served Thomas Howard, 3rd Duke of Norfolk, as his secretary, avoided public shame with a very final act in the Tower of London. What happened? What led him to this end? Well, you can find out in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. Also on this day in 1536, during the fall of Queen Anne Boleyn, the grand jury of Middlesex met to decide on whether the Queen, George Boleyn, Sir Henry Norris, Sir Francis Weston, William Brereton and Mark Smeaton should be sent to trial. But what were the charges? Well, you can find out in the 10th of May 1536 video, which I'll give you a link to. Now, I do apologise if I've gone rather shiny, but it is so very hot. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll see you soon. Bye bye.